I do all my computer programming in Linux. Whether skies are clear or cloudy on the day of the eclipse won't really matter to retired physicist David Hunter. You can hear the motor moving and see the mirror move. That's because he and a team of volunteers have spent years building what he calls a tower of light to be launched within the path of totality in Florenceville, Bristol, New Brunswick on eclipse day. The payload has six cameras on board, with one taking continuous video and another to be dynamically aimed at the sun. It will all be attached to a balloon capable of ascending up to 30 kilometers into the stratosphere. The device is run by this lithium ion battery pack. The system has a Wi-Fi network with the main computer being a Raspberry Pi 4. There are five computers in total. The Agile Eye Camera system has three motors in it, one to run each axis of the gimbal along with a motor to bring the solar filter in or out of the camera. So no matter how much this spins, the camera's going to stay in the same place? Uh, to a first approximation. <laughs> Not perfectly. It's taken years of prep work, all done by volunteers, and a budget of about $50,000 from sponsors. There have been four test launches already. I'm going to check that the uh, real-time clock is correct. Most of the tinkering happens in and around Hunter's kitchen. This is just manual spinning, uh, but we have another spinner. Like when we say it's pointing north, is it really pointing north? So then if it's pointing east, uh, is it really pointing east? Hunter says his team is as prepared as they'll ever be, but it all comes down to weather. The weather is the number one concern. Although we're trying to get above the clouds, if it were particularly windy, it would cause us real problems in preparing the balloon and launching it. Another concern is precipitation. If it's raining or wetness coming down, it could add extra weight to the balloon, which would not be good. The Solar Eclipse Balloon Project is the only citizen-led project of its kind outside of NASA. After parachute descent, it will be somewhere in New Brunswick, typically high up in some trees. The weather network will be broadcasting the stream as it happens, and the live stream can be accessed on YouTube.